Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim we begin with Allah's blessed name we praise him and we glorify him as he ought to be praised and glorified and we pray for peace and for blessings on all our noble messengers on all his noble messengers and in particular on the last of them all the blessed prophet Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam as we greet you from the city of Lahore in Pakistan on this the 18th day of the month of Shawwal with uh, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and uh, we return to the subject of the great war which is coming we spoke on turkey and the great war and the implications of turkish continued turkish membership in nato the north atlantic treaty organization how this affects preparations for the great war we spoke of uh, uh, pakistan and the great war a series of three videos and what should pakistan do to prepare for the great war but we did not spell out in detail we only gave you the wide contours for the details we kept it private that information we can we can share with you privately not perfectly and then we uh, gave we we prepare we gave a lect- another lecture on russia and the great war and uh, it would surprise our russian uh, speaking audience uh, in russia and elsewhere how much there is in the quran which is linked with russia not the name russia but of course with the orthodox christian world which is led by russia uh, and that that video was meant to alert the orthodox christian world of what does the quran have to say to you as you prepare for the great war but now we end with the last video uh, on iran and the great war and uh, Our first observation is that Iran is so fortunate. Oh yes, so fortunate. Our prophet Allah's blessings be upon him had a companion who was Iranian uh, and his name was Salman radiyallahu ta'ala anhu and he is known as Salman Farsi or Farisi uh, because he belonged to the Iranian uh, nation and uh, or to the Iranian people rather than nation and uh, he, he, the prophet al-Islam one day he remarked about Salman he said about his people he said that if wisdom were located up there in the stars his people would reach up to the stars to locate wisdom and so <laughs> this is a great compliment This is a great great compliment that Nabi Muhammad alayhi salam gave to the Iranian people the Farsi speaking people their wisdom and this is today manifested in the kind and the quality of the caliber of leadership that Iran has in the person of what is known as the rahbar or the supreme leader of Iran Ayatollah Sayyid Ali Khamenei, the two great leaders, political leaders in the world today, the two, the two who stand head and shoulders above all the rest of mankind, are the leaders of Russia, post-Soviet Russia, the President Vladimir Putin, and his uh, his foreign minister um, Sergei Sergei, and the leader of Iran, Ayatollah. Sayyid Ali Khamenei. This is a man of great wisdom, a mature political thinker, a religious thinker, and a man of wisdom. And so Iran approaches the Great War with a wise leader, and that is a plus. That is something that Iran will benefit from. 
Iran as a consequence already has a very sensible and intelligent foreign policy. It is one in which it is clear the profile of Iran is as clear and plain as daylight that it stands in resolute opposition to the oppressors of the world led by Washington. One could only wish that other parts of the world of Islam could have the inside, the foresight, the clarity of vision that Iran has. To recognize the Western world to be a, an oppressor and Washington to be the leader of the oppressors. And it was the, the founder of the modern state, the revolution in Iran, Ayatollah Ruhullah Khomeini, who pointed his finger with matchless courage, pointed his finger to Washington and declared, this is Shaitan al-Kabir, the great Satan. And he was absolutely correct. But the others don't have the kind of courage and integrity that Ayatollah Khomeini had. And so Iran has a, pro a profile that is plain and clear as daylight. Iran is not sitting in on, a, on any fence. And not only does Iran have this profile of resistance to the oppressor, but Iran for a long time now has recognized Russia as a friend and has established progressively a close and abiding relationship with Russia. And so Iran is now well placed to prepare for the Great War. One wishes that Pakistan could have been similarly well placed in preparing for the Great War. The Great War, obviously, the Great War is obviously a war in which NATO and its satraps would be waging war on Russia and China because of the, the obsession ruling the world and those, those who stand in their way, who will not bend their knees in subjection to the Western rulership over the world, they wage war on them. And that's why they are lusting to wage war on Russia and China because China is proud as a civilization and China will not bend its knee to them. But the schoolboys can't understand that, so what can I do for them? And Russia is a proud civilization now. Russia is Orthodox Christian. Russia is no longer communist and Soviet. Russia is now returning to her Orthodox Christian heart, her spiritual heart. And that spiritual heart, that Christian heart of Russia is such that it will never bend its knee to that bogus Christianity that is there in the West. And so Iran must be complimented for having the wisdom of building a strategic friendship and alliance with Russia. Iran has demonstrated even greater integrity in the recent war, it was engineered by satanic forces who armed Azerbaijan, not the people, the government of Azerbaijan. Satanic forces. That's right, with a capital S. Satanic forces who armed for many years the government of Azerbaijan. I am not speaking ill of the people. I love the people of Azerbaijan. But their government is a different thing. And these satanic forces led by, you know who, Israel. That's right, Israel. Armed Azerbaijan, provided the drones that they need to wage war in the modern age. And when Azerbaijan launched the war, on Armenia and then lied, monstrously so, they lied and said, no, we didn't start the war, they started the war. What did Iran do? Although the people of Azerbaijan are Shia and Iran is Shia, Iran had the integrity to stand by the side of Armenia in that war. 
So again and again you're seeing the correct foreign policy on the part of Iran, consistently correct. And so I Iran has won the love and affection of the Orthodox Christian world. I remember my next door neighbor, Venezuela, and Hugo Chavez in Venezuela with much less courage stood up to resist the Yankee oppressor and, uh, and he paid the price for it as the president of Tanzania paid the price and when he died, Hugo Chavez died the only leader from the world of Islam who was there for that funeral of Hugo Chavez a giant, a hero of a man who stood up to resist the oppressor and when the Palestinians, when, the, when Gaza was being destroyed, it was Hugo Chavez who expelled the Iran, Israeli ambassador. And when Hugo Chavez died, only Iran sent her president, Mahmoud Ahmadinejad, to attend the funeral of Hugo Chavez. Nobody else cared for Hugo Chavez except Iran. And when Mahmoud Ahmadi Najad went to the funeral, the old woman, the mother of Hugo Chavez came to him. And she was crying and she reached out to him. And guess what he did? Guess what Mahmoud Ahmadi Najad did? If he listens to this video, I think he will be very happy to hear. Ahmad, Mahmoud Ahmadi Najad put his arms around the old woman and hug her in public. This is the wisdom of the Iranian leadership. When you have men like Sayyid Ali Khamenei and you have men like Mahmoud Ahmadi Najjar, then a country has great leaders. And so Iran is preparing with great wisdom for the Great War. Consistently in its foreign policy, supporting Armenia, against an Azerbaijan that was Shia, but which is the aggressor. And so now we turn to how it, Iran is now preparing for the Great War. Iran has Afghanistan and Pakistan as neighbors on one side, but it has Turkey as a neighbor on the other side. And Turkey is a member state of NATO. And so we send a message of warning to the Iranian leadership. If it is necessary because they are already so skilled as diplomats and so wise the wisdom that the prophet spoke about they don't even need my advice but both pakistan and iran are in danger in consequence of turkey's continued membership in nato because nato is going to be waging war on russia and russia will be victorious in that war because Allah promised room. Allah promised room. Binasrillahi and Surumayyasha. That Allah will help room. And room is Constantinople. Surah to room of the Quran. Room is Constantinople. Yes, of course, room was broken into two. And one part went to the west. And, and that's the Santa Claus Christianity you have. But that is no longer room. It is that part which stayed in Constantinople, that is Rome. The one that went to, to the West, Allah cursed it. He said, Kunu kidaratan khasi'in, be apes, despise. But this part still remains, Rome. And when the Constantinople was taken over by the Ottomans, then the leadership of Rome went to Moscow. And so it is Russia today, which is the room of the Quran. Russia today is the room of the Quran. Let me say that one more time. So the schoolboy will find a hole in which to go and hide his head. Standing up constantly, 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 praising the Ottoman Empire. But I'm telling you to your faces today. Room of the Quran is Russia. You don't understand that, understand that you pay a price for it. And Allah is helping Rome. So as we prepare for the great war, 
we go to the Quran and we find not only has Allah promised a room one victory, but not but more than that, He promised them two victories. And on both occasions the room is victorious. We Muslims will celebrate except those schoolboys. Alif Rajim. Alif Lam Me. Ulibati Room. Room has been defeated. Fi Adnal up in a land close by. Close to this land where the Quran was revealed. So that can't be Europe. وَهُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ غَلَبِهِمْ سَيَقْلِبُونَ But after this defeat, they will soon be victorious, says the Qur'an. How soon? فِي بِدْعِ السِّنِينَ And the Prophet said, this means between three and nine years. So the Qur'an is giving a prophecy, a divine prophecy. The room will be reversing its defeat and become victorious within three to nine years. And it did come to pass. And today we are reminding you that that room which was victorious was Constantinople. And today it is Russia who represents that room. But the Quran goes on to say, Min Qabl, wa min ba'd, min Qabl, Wa min ba'd, that there will be two victories. Min qabl, one victory which is before. Wa min ba'd, and another victory which comes after. Begging the question, there's something in between. What is it that is in between? In reference to which, this is the victory that occurs before, and this is the victory that will occur after. Answer, it is a breakup of Rome in 1054. When one part of Rome embraced shirk up to its throat and that part broke away from Constantinople and went to the west and the other part of Rome refused to take on that shirk up to its very throat and said, no, 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 the Holy Spirit comes only from the Father, not from the Son. In the Quran says, Bukuli Ruhu bin Amri Rabbi. The difference, of course, is we don't use the word Father. They have the Trinity. But they insist that the Holy Spirit does not come from the Son, it comes from the Father. But the Western world, which broke away from Constantinople, they embraced that risk, that shirk with a capital S insisting that the Holy Spirit comes not only from the Father, it comes from the Son as well. And so Allah helped them before the great schism of 1054, and they were victorious, and we celebrated. But there's another victory coming to Rome, and when that victory comes, it is because Allah will help them. And Allah speaks of that help, in Surah Al-Rahman, and he says, "Sanafrugu lakum ayyuhasakalan." So read my book, the Quran, the Great War, and the West, of Allah's intervention in that Great War which is coming, and Russia is on the right side of that war, because Russia is in is with Rome. Russia will defeat. I, uh, Iran is on the right side of that war. Iran is in alliance with Russia, and Russia will, will win that war that is coming, the Great War. It is Turkey's membership in NATO which creates a problem both for Iran and for Pakistan. And it is time for the Iranian people. I don't think the Iranian government will do it. They may think it is diplomatically uh, uh, improper for them to address Turkey and say to Turkey, get out of NATO. The Pakistani government may consider it diplomatically impossible to tell Turkey, get out of NATO. So it is the Pakistani people and the Iranian people who have to do what the government find difficult to do. 
and that is to raise their voices as loudly as they can at this time calling on Turkey, the Turkish people, to tell your government, get out of NATO and do it quickly. And telling the Turkish people, if your government does not get out of Turkey, if your government does not get out of NATO, then Turkey, please stay away from us. You're a danger to us. This is how the Iranian people and the Pakistani people should prepare for the great war which is coming. This is by far the most important issue that Iran has to face in the war which is coming. Then, of course, there is the question of Israel. And Israel wants to replace the United States after the Great War as a ruling state of the world with Pax Judaica. But Pakistan stands in the way because of Pakistan's nuclear weapons. And in our previous videos, we have said that Pakistan will become enemy number one because of Pakistan's nuclear weapons. But if Pakistan is enemy number one for Pax Judaica, Iran is enemy number two. So both Iran and Pakistan become enemies because of their nuclear threat. In the case of Pakistan, thanks to Zulfikar Ali Bhutto, you are a nuclear power today. Because it was Zulf Zulfikar Ali Bhutto who organized the Lahore Islamic Summit Conference in February of 1974, in defiance of the West. And as soon as that conference was, was held, and successfully so, and credit must go to Zulfikar Ali Bhutto, within two months of that conference, India detonated their first nuclear blast. And India joined the nuclear club in response to the Lahore Islamic Conference. And then Zulfikar Ali Bhutto replied, and said, even if we have to eat grass, Pakistan must become a nuclear power, not to threaten others, but rather that your nuclear weapons would be a deterrent. And so Pakistan joined the nuclear club. What did Iran do? Iran chose, even before the revolution, to become a member state of the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty. And so when the revolution took place, the revolution was already in a spade jacket. What to do? The revolution, Iran's revolutionary leaders responded in a manner that was so intelligent I could not understand it. But now I understand it. What I could not understand previously, I now understand the wisdom of Iran's nuclear policy. That is that Iran has already built everything. And Iran can become a nuclear power within maybe days. It didn't take more than that. But Iran insists, we don't want to become a nuclear power. We don't want to acquire nuclear weapons. But if you attack us, Oh yes, as soon as we are attacked, the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty will be thrown out of the window. And within days, Iran will become a nuclear weapon state. That is brilliant. And today, I have congratulated Iran for its nuclear policy. Pakistan did not need that. Zulfikar Ali Bhutto said it plainly in response to Iran. India's nuclear plus joining the nuclear club. But Iran needed something more sophisticated. And this is wherefore, as soon as an attack is launched on Iran, the immediate result would be that Iran would become a nuclear weapon state, join the nuclear club. The, therefore, the question arises, will Israel attack Iran? I have said in previous videos, I'm almost absolutely certain 
that Pakistan will be enemy number one as soon as the war takes place and they will attack Pakistan. And as presently prepared, Pakistan is not prepared at all. There is no hope at all that Pakistan can succeed in, in uh, 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 responding to an attack on Pakistan, to denuclearize Pakistan. There is no hope. But there is time for Pakistan to correct itself. And we have mentioned three initiatives. Number one, pertaining to India. Number two, pertaining to Russia. Number three, pertaining to Allah. And we have not spelled them out in detail. But in the case of Iran, it seems to me, and I can be wrong, that the master plan from the time of the origin of this Ummah and the emergence of the Shia sect in Islam, that the master plan has always been to try to foment Shia Sunni civil war in the house of Islam. And so I do not anticipate an attack on Iran similar to the attack on Pakistan to deliver a knockout blow to Iran and to break up Iran into Tukra Tukra parts and pieces. That is the plan for Pakistan, but not for Iran. Because they want to trigger off Shia Sunni civil war. That's the Trump card. And so I expect that it will be a lightning strike on Iran simply to trigger off a war. That's all. But more than that. And that they will allow Iran to take Bahrain because that's the first prize very easily for Iran to take Bahrain. And as soon as Iran take Bahrain, because the population is majority Shia, and they're being ruthlessly oppressed by Sunni, a Sunni government that is an oppressor. So the people will welcome Iran in Bahrain. But the trap is being set, and I hope these words will reach to Ayatollah Sayyid Ali Khamenei, that the trap is being set for Iran to try to get Iran to come over from Bahrain across the causeway into the Arabian Peninsula and to head for Mecca. If Iran ever makes that mistake, if Iran falls for that trap, may God, may Allah grant that the, the, the day may never come, then Iran will be walking into a trap which will provoke Sunni Shia civil war in the house of Islam and they will get what they want. So one can only hope and pray that this plan does not succeed and the Iranians will realize any effort, military effort, to liberate the Arabian Peninsula cannot be on the basis of a Shia attack on Sunni Arabia. No, it is the Imam al-Mahdi. He will liberate the Arabian Peninsula, not Iran. This has been a quick um, contour uh, of the events that are occurring and uh, how Iran is likely to respond to them. Before I end, there is one word of advice for Iran. As I give the same advice to Pakistan and I give the same advice to Russia that your primary identity is your faith, not your nationality. So as you prepare for the war, you're not fighting as Russians, you're not fighting as Iranians, you're not fighting as Pakistanis. As you prepare for the great war which is coming, in which Allah is going to intervene, you are a Christian people, and you follow the son of Mary, the true Messiah. So fight in that war as Christians. And you are a Muslim people who follow Prophet Muhammad, Allah's blessing be upon you. So fight in that war not as Pakistanis and Iranians. Forget that. Your primary identity is Muslim. And this is what is there in the Quran before we end. Listen to the words constructed in the Quran. 
ala says ba'dawuz billahi min ash-shaytani r-rajim wa latajidanna and you will most certainly find aqrabahum mawaddatan lilladhina amanu alladhina qalu inna nasara the those who will be closest in love and affection for you the ummah of muhammad would be a people who declare we are Christians. They don't declare we are Roman Catholic. They don't declare we are Protestant. They don't declare we are Orthodox Russian. <laughs> they don't declare we are Tablig. We are Brelvi, we are Deobandi, we are Shia, we are Salafi. Their primary identity is we are Christian. And so the Quran is speaking to us and telling us our primary identity is not Shia. This is my word, a gentle word of advice to Iran. That when you fight in the Great War, you're not fighting as Shia, you're fighting as Muslims. And may Allah grant that His help may come to the believers in the Great War which is coming. Thank you. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.